Thank you very much. So for the next session, those of you who saw Heidi's face pop up there, um, it's because one of our uh, presenters is participating remotely. Um, and so, Dan, you're going to be coordinating this group, right? <laughs> trying to multitask as both the overall right. note taker and the session. Well, I'll, I'll take notes. Um, and so the group is moving up there. So this is the exciting, several times alluded to session on novel and disruptive opportunities in genomic medicine. Um, and again, because there was a lot of interest in this session on the organizing committee, they were often also given a little bit longer of a time slot. Dan, turn it over to you. Um, okay, so um, thanks for uh, uh, bringing me into this session. Sorry, I couldn't be there in person. So, uh, if Qatar and I are going to split the pre first presentation, I'm going to focus a little bit more around the interpretation side of the um, of this uh, session. And so the, I just wanted to start with um, kind of the current eMERGE workflow in terms of data delivery. Um, and so those of you who are involved in eMERGE may recognize this sort of diagrammatic figure. In, in the case of eMERGE today, we have nine sites that are all delivering orders and information to two different sequencing centers that work to harmonize um, activities and, and share data into common resources. But then the genetic reports are going back to each of the sites from only one of the two sequencing centers. And each of those deliveries in some ways is being customized in order to bring the genetic information into the electronic health record environment. So there's many custom processes for data integration. Uh, in addition, the only data that's actually being brought into those systems are really what's being reported from the sequencing, and that's generally the likely pathogenic and path variants from a limited set of genes and a few SNPs that were chosen. So, you know, I think it was, as we think about novel and disruptive approaches, we really want to think beyond this, and, and you saw a piece of this from Sandy's presentation in the last session. But, you know, as we think towards eMERGE 4, I think we, although we may or may not, you know, think about a core sequencing support for the eMERGE network, I think we also have to embrace that there are external reference labs, internal hospital labs, even direct consumer sources of genetic information that are being brought into um, the care of patients. And I think uh, we need to think about integrating all of those sources together uh, as a unified genetic source information that can be brought into the EHR. And that may not be directly into the EHR. You know, a lot of us recognize some of the limitations of the existing EHR systems, but certainly ancillary systems that communicate with the EHR, thinking about bringing all of those different sources in, including knowledge sources like ClinVar, which is evolving. Uh, we also have to think about how to keep patients up to date with that information, um, and that may include systems to alert physicians to knowledge changes as we bring updated genetic information into the systems and be able to update that information that may come from reference labs, internal labs, direct consumer, or even research programs. Uh, we also have to recognize that physicians who care for patients change over time, yet those patients still need information to be updated and how do we interact with patients, even the absence of physicians who are still caring for them. So I think the areas of eMERGE, you know, opportunity in terms of knowledge updates are really building on standards for structure reporting um, and being able to work with all sources of genetic data, ensuring all genetic data is, is kept in structured form for us to build on it as well as determine how and when to update genetic knowledge and alert physicians. Um, and this also is probably an opportunity for ClinGen to partner with eMERGE in this setting. Another thing, and, and I think Mark gave an example in one of his questions in the last setting uh, or session, is, is how we think about real-time use of genetic information, even information that hasn't yet been interpreted in a particular context. So in the top, you have a, you know, a patient with, who may show up in your office with symptoms or a family history. Can we think about ways to directly engage uh, genomic data in real time? And you know, I use this sort of traffic light scenario where 
a physician is concerned about a particular scenario with the patient, um, and they, by being able to real-time access that genetic information, they may be triggered to immediately order a clinical genetic test because it, the system already shows that there's potentially a pathogenic previously interpreted variant in their genome, or maybe there's a variant that's novel but suspicious that hasn't been interpreted um, that might trigger the physician to consider a genetic test with a degree of uncertainty about that genome. Or, you know, when the symptoms are mild and the genome says there's nothing in any gene related to this indication, that might prompt them to not worry about genetics. So thinking about how can we in real time engage with the genome, I think is something that we really need to start thinking about how to do. Um, so, you know, in order to support this, there's a lot more work by improving standardized data models for genomic data, um, as well as thinking about the quality standards for which variants are brought in. If these are non-confirmed uh, um, and interpreted variants, they may vary in their quality. And I think an opportunity for eMERGE4 is thinking about the details around the standards for how we interact directly with raw genomic sequencing data or variant call files. Heidi, but then we have Heidi. to really think about standards. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry for interrupting you. There's some gray box. You know what? It, is it some box you can minimize? You know what? Yeah. Well, I'm try I keep trying to move it. It's, the it's my own um, video image that's sitting there now. I Sorry. I'm trying to get rid of it. There, there it goes. Okay, thanks. Sorry. So I moved it. Thanks. Um, and then the other thing is just the decision logic for using uninterpreted data and how do we develop ways to ask questions um, and, and have scenarios of, of dictating clinical care based on the data that's been. The third scenario that I wanted to talk about is really using the, um, enhancing how we can think about variant interpretation. So the current eMERGE workflow is just like standard genetic testing. We take an order with very limited patient data in from the site, which may only be a simple overall diagnosis or they are healthy. Uh, is our indication for testing. And really, then the laboratories are pulling mostly public knowledge sources. They may be articles published in the literature or data in ClinVar as our only source of information to interpret those variants. But um, I think what we'd really like to see is a real-time integration of population information, perhaps even direct patient data from survey data that access could support Forming genetic interpretation, uh, and that you know will require better common and rare disease phenotyping data in EHR, the ability for patients to contribute to that phenotypic data, as well as infrastructure for labs and clinicians to access aggregate and individual level patient data from many sources, and that would allow us to more richly and thoughtfully interpret genetic data as we deliver that those results back to the patient. So I, I'm going to stop there and turn it over to Iskakar to do the next section.